Are you from out of town? New York American. The fact is, uh, I'm running for a fourth term. Your Honor, Mr. Your Honor. Court. Uh, you'll have to excuse Ms. Stone. New York's a little foggy on the rest of the world. Well, Mr. Corby, uh, I find the press occasionally foggy everywhere. You once had me gambling in the West Indies when I was attending a mayor's conference in Bermuda. And Mr. Kane of the Herald back there, he once reported I moved a piano into City Hall to write music for a Broadway show. Mr. Kane, of course. How are you doing physically, Mayor? Physically? You were kind of indisposed for a few days after that. What, is, what was that, a, a fall you took? Oh, come on now, Mr. Kane. Even you hostile gentlemen of the Daily Herald can forgive a slight loss of balance on a New Year's Eve. Uh, Your Honor. Mayor. Your Honor. Excuse me, Mayor Skeffington. Yes. We all thought the Democrats were going to run Paul Garvey. He's writing a book on the city manager system, which, as you know, we don't have in this city, but... Uh... I'm here, Kane. Yes, I hear you. Go on. All right, all right, get back here. Skeffington did not announce his retirement this morning. He's running again. So your inside information wasn't very reliable, Nat. You suppose your sister was deliberately misinforming you? She never informed me of anything. I merely inferred from certain things she said. So the result is you put up George A. Sherrard, which is exactly what Skeffington wanted you to do. Come on, Amos. We needed a man we could handle. Well, you'll be handling bits and pieces when Skeffington gets through with him. Better stick to your law practice. Stop trying to run the Republican Party. Get me Norman Cass. What is it, Amos? Are you really surprised? It's the oldest trick in politics, and you fell for it. Well, well ca calm yourself, Amos. Take a pill. Amos, we'll talk later. I've got a director's meeting at the bank. That was all right. I didn't think Kane had hit me with that physical thing. You handled it OK, Frank. Well, you never know when it might come up again. Don. Yes, sir. I'm going to see Dr. Sandangelo at the house this week, please. Right. I uh, called the lady, Frank. Where? On the boat. I told her. And? Furious, sure, sure. Your Honor, some people from the 11th Ward are doing. Two of them as nuns. Oh, yeah, is that the playground thing? Yes, sir, it is. Well, I'll tell them not today, Dido, this week for sure. Can I send them home in the limousine? No, it's meeting my son. You get him a tactic. Yes, sir. Frank, take my advice. Don't try to catch Robert like this. I mean, after 16 years. The car's at the airport by now. I can get on the phone, call it back. Let me set up a dinner at the house, Frank. Everybody can get prepared, be in the right frame of mind. But I'm afraid of the house. He might not want to come to the house. Frank. Don, let me do this my way. Now, yeah, let's go, please. Weinberg will have this thing. You remember me? I'm Sam Weinberg, your father's attorney. Sure, of course. How are you? Swell. The last time I saw you, you were addressing a jury, the Crawford tax case. Oh, yeah. Did you win? I didn't win, but I got a mistrial. Mr. Weinberg, my wife Maeve. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Skeffington? Uh, this is Sergeant Hack Wiles of the mayor's staff. Hi, how are you? Good morning. I'm here to meet you and your lovely wife at the request of your dad. Oh? And how did he know we were coming? Anything important happens in this town, the mayor knows about it. My arrivals here before were never important. Look, uh, try to forget the years gone by, Bob. Believe me, you've never been out of his thoughts. I don't think so. We're expected elsewhere. It'll mean an awful lot to your dad. Uh, he's running again, by the way. Again? Oh, a lot of great work to be done in this town. And your old man's the only one who can do it. Go ahead. I'll see you in a little while. May you? Remember, you have something to tell him. Do it. For me? Okay, what about these contractors, Walsh and Tomasino? Yeah, well, out here, I'll see them at the house. It's all right. That's, that's a job for Hack Wiles. Hey, excuse me, Your Honor. He's coming down the hall this minute. Oh, yeah? Oh, well, all right, here, here. Say I'll call back. Okay.
Well, hey, I can't believe that's Bobby. <laughs> well, it isn't Bobby anymore. Yeah. I'm very glad to see you. It seems a lifetime. Are you alone? My wife went straight home. We're staying with her father. Oh, yeah, I see. Well, uh, I suppose you remember my old and close friend, John Gorman? Administrative assistant Don Winslow. And, of course, Ditto Boland here. And over here, his old pal and former law partner, James Michael Minahan. Hack, hack, it's all right. Leave him alone. Jimmy just uh, came around for a little chat. Hey, Jimmy? I don't want any chat. The hell with chat. This is Jimmy here. This isn't some poor nigger from the 17th Ward looking for a handout. Or some dopey Mick relation trying to get a saloon license from Brother Gorman over there. This is Jimmy. Who made you, Frank? Oh, come on, Jim. Let me put you in a cab, Jimmy. Take a cab yourself. Take it all the way back to the bog of Allen. Listen, uh, Jimmy, if you want to wait here a few minutes... Can't wait, Frank. Can't wait. Gotta get over the cathedral for the 12 mass. For my sins. Thought you might like to nip over there with me just once. But I see you tied up. Grace sends her best. She prays for us, Frank. This time is short. I knew your mother. I was sorry for her. Ah, oh, don't worry about that, Bob. Don't worry. Come on in the office. Come on, this way. Come on. Take a chair. Oh, please, please, sit down. Jimmy Minahan used to be my uh, transit commissioner. I guess you remember him. I remember that he went to jail. Yeah, well, I wangled him a light sentence, uh, and he tried to tell the D.A. how I fixed it. You know, he wanted to make a trade, me in for him out. <laughs> ah, but forget about that. I won't keep you long. I just thought if I could catch you and Maeve, I might be able to persuade you to come and stay with me at the old house. Why? Well, I thought maybe I could conjure up some sense of, uh, oh, I don't know, family among the three of us. At this point in time, why bother? Besides, you've got a campaign coming up. How could you spare the time? Oh, I think I could. If I got another chance. Why don't you retire? You're supposed to be rich? Oh, no. As my only heir, you better know the gloomy truth. I'm not. But then I'm not destitute either. But, uh, no, that's, that's, that, that's only press talk. Well, all I know about you is what I read in the press. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, I can survive it. But I don't know how you survive it, campaign after campaign. Well, I'm not going to tell you it doesn't get me down, but when I see those winning numbers on election night, I rise again like a phoenix. That's what Mother used to say. The poison never made you sick. Well, you look ready for more of the same. Oh, I'm fine. And you look fine, too, Bob. You know, I, I've satisfied myself with pictures over the years. Grace Minahan used to get them from your mother, and I had some of them copied. There's a wedding picture there. That's a pretty girl, Maeve. Thank you. You'll notice your mother standing in the background there. Oh, by the way, you know, I, I always worried about when your mother died, and I, uh, I couldn't be there. Oh, I understood. You were 
Way off on a boat somewhere. With a friend. Yeah. I hate to be abrupt, but I ought to be with Maeve. Can the car take me? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, have the car stand by, please. I'd love to meet Maeve. I'll mention it. Good day, gentlemen. Good day, Thanks for meeting you. Take a little time, Frank. Uh, nice looking guy, isn't he? Yes, he is, Your Honor. Nice looking wife, too. Nice straight look in her eye. She was the one who made him come with us. She wouldn't take no for an answer. Maybe I got a pal in that house. What did he say? Did you tell him we're going to have a baby? No. Why? Because it didn't come up. How do I forget the pain he gave my mother? Your mother once told me she never should have left him. She never said that to me. Because it was only useful to me. She said a woman should never make a man choose between her and his work. Either way, everything gets lost. If you're telling me that she needed him, I always knew that. But he didn't need her. He had politics. Then a little later on, he found himself a woman. Mr. Gardner, Mayor Skeffington has just announced that he would run again. What's your reaction? I'll see well, you I was sure. surprised. Hi. Hi. Your aunt on board? Uh huh. But she still doesn't want to talk to you. Well, wait a minute. You mad at me, too? No. I may even vote for you. Okay. Frank Skeffington was a kid from Shamrock Fields, the Irish ghetto. He worked as a stevedore, a bartender, and a singing waiter across the river in Little Bavaria. But somehow managed to I, find I wanted the time to, talk to educate to himself and finish his clerkship in Jim Minahan's law. He took to the business of war politics like a tough alley cat. Claire, the party had nobody. The leaders met over at the Sheridan. There wasn't a candidate in sight. Till you came out from under the bed. The Republicans put up this nitwit charade to make noises for them like the horn on a car. The man can't run this city. I knew you were going to run as far back as New Year's Eve. Oh, no, this only came up in the last couple. Yes, my old fraud, yes. 